through a timesheet process to a certain job, and those costs are collected in various categories of labor. For manufacturers that make batches of unique or customized products, costs are often tracked and reported by each individual job order. Job cost accounting systems use a perpetual inventory approach to track the specific ongoing costs of creating product. What we call a cut order is issued, which is a ticket which goes out to manufacture a certain number of pillows. So that cut ticket goes to the cutting department, which is where the fabric, so he goes to the inventory and they release a certain amount of fabric for him to cut. So once he cuts it, he scans into his computer, into his terminal, how much fabric did he cut. So that then gets automatically taken off inventory. Once he cuts it in the right sizes and pieces and so on, he passes it on to the printing department. Again, they scan it in as having been received. We usually come, so you work my bundles. Let's say 24 pieces in one bundle. So then that bundle gets scanned in in the printing department. They print it. When it gets from the printing side, to the sewing side, again, they scan it in. So you know at each step of the process how much material you have handled, how much you receive, how much you send out, so you know your waste, how much you lost in the process. You know also how long it took you because you have the labor factors for those things. So once you get into sewing, again, the same thing happens. They sew it into pillow covers. And then when it goes out of sewing, it gets scanned. Then it goes into the drawing department and it comes out of there, they scan how many pillows they do. So it's a track of information from the very beginning of the process to the end until it gets either put into inventory as finished goods or it gets shipped out of the door and then it becomes a sale. So that information gets captured on a real-time basis. Job order cost accounting tracks the specific costs of producing each job and is commonly used in construction, printing, machine shop, and custom furniture businesses. When a job is begun, it is assigned a job number, and all costs associated with that job are recorded together on some form of job cost sheet. When we're awarded the job after bid, we will issue the job number, and we'll usually trade a job number for a set of budgets where we can set up the cost codes that we're going to eventually track the, uh, the costs in. And those cost codes, um, are, are universal in nature in the industry, and they will break the job down from the general conditions, which would be the project overhead, down to the labor involved by the, the general contractor, down to purchase orders where we're buying material, and subcontracts where we're subcontracting out all the work. Um, once that job is set up, then costs can start accruing into the project. We track those costs and keep them all in one sub-ledger of the general ledger, and uh, they are, they're tracked that way in order for us to maintain the controls we need in order to properly require, record the costs and then uh, pay the bill. The job cost sheet records the direct materials and labor used to produce the specific order in question. Once the job has begun, these costs are tracked as work in process inventory. For example, when a steel truck comes in, uh, every job has a job number, which is sequenced through the computer. And uh, when they unload the steel truck, the steel is sorted, and the, it's the people that unload its responsibility to indicate on every piece of steel the job numbers. So we know exactly that piece of steel was allocated for this job. Time cards are the same way. The men fill out time cards on a daily basis for where they work. And many times in a day, they'll shift jobs two or three times inside the shop, and there will be different job numbers assigned to that. The constant flow of information in a job cost system allows for close monitoring by project managers. The reports that are generated, we have one that summarizes labor, a labor distribution report. It is a listing of all the employees who have been charged to that project, the number of hours, and the dollars. And this is important for the project manager to receive it timely and uh, review it timely because in two more weeks, that's ancient history in his mind and uh, the time to correct it is, is then. We also have just a general job cost summary that will list all the cost codes as defined by each individual project. It will in turn show an original budget. It will show a revised budget based on change orders or revisions that have been approved by the owner or the company, 
Then it starts tracking the actual data that is incurred to that date. And that would be the hours incurred, the dollars associated with those, those hours, the, uh, the dollars that we've charged to the project for the various cost codes. We, we meaning the people that sell the work, are given the weekly reports showing them exactly where their costs are coming in at in relation to what they had estimated the job for. Uh, in this business, almost everything is estimated from scratch as a new project. We do get repeat work, but 90% of what we do is a one-time deal. From that, you know, we have to be able to say we're on track or we're not on track. When the job is completed, overhead is allocated and the job cost sheet is completed. Finished goods are moved out of production. And similarly, the accumulated costs are moved out of the work and process inventory and into the finished goods inventory. In manufacturing, the cost of materials, labor, and overhead are entered into accounts as they are purchased and applied to production. In other words, the cost buildup in the accounts roughly parallels the movement of products through the factory to their eventual sales and reflects a perpetual inventory system. As materials are purchased, the cost is recorded as an increase in the raw materials inventory account. A requisition for direct materials from production triggers an increase in the goods in process inventory account and a reduction in the raw materials inventory account. A requisition for indirect materials triggers an increase in factory overhead and a reduction in the raw materials inventory. Goods in process inventory is increased for direct labor costs transferred from the factory payroll account. Factory overhead is increased for indirect labor costs transferred from the factory payroll account. Factory overhead is also increased for other actual overhead expenses by transferring these costs from related accounts. Goods and process inventory is increased for factory overhead costs. As jobs are completed, their costs are transferred by increasing finished goods inventory and decreasing goods in process inventory. Finished products sold to customers increases cost of goods sold and decreases finished goods inventory. The sale to the customer at retail would also be recorded. The recording and assignment of factory overhead costs is more complicated than direct materials or direct labor costs. This is because overhead costs are indirect and consist of many different fixed and variable items. It is practically impossible to precisely assign all actual overhead costs directly to a job order or unit of product. For reasons of simplicity, efficiency, and consistency, companies may allocate overhead using a predetermined rate based on the measure of activity that is common to all their products and services. Many companies use direct labor hours as their allocation base. Some use machine time. The most important factor in choosing a base for overhead allocation is that it be meaningfully connected to products produced or services delivered. An issue we'll explore further in future lessons. Let's look at the basic calculation for the predetermined overhead allocation rate. The rate is usually determined annually. A company must forecast the total manufacturing overhead cost for the year and divide it by the estimated total activity in the allocation base. For example, if a company estimates annual manufacturing overhead costs of $400,000 and is using an estimated 50,000 direct labor hours as an allocation base, then its predetermined overhead rate would be $8 per direct labor hour. Some companies believe that a single overhead allocation base does not provide enough information to accurately assign costs. By separating manufacturing overhead into meaningful components, a multiple allocation rate can be determined that may improve allocation of costs. One factor to remember about assigning overhead using a predetermined rate is that the amounts allocated throughout a period will never exactly match the actual overhead costs. 
Thus, periodically, the allocated overhead must be compared to actual overhead, and the differences accounted for. When the overhead applied within a period is less than the actual overhead incurred, the resulting debit balance is called underapplied overhead. This amount, when insignificant, is typically allocated or closed entirely to cost of goods sold. When the overhead applied exceeds the actual overhead costs for the period, it is called over-applied overhead. It is treated similarly, but this time debited to manufacturing overhead and credited to cost of goods sold. Closing out under-applied overhead increases cost of goods sold, and closing out over-applied overhead decreases cost of goods sold. Closing a material amount of under or over applied manufacturing overhead to cost of goods sold is not appropriate. Doing so will misstate cost of goods sold on the income statement as well as ending balances in the goods in process and finished goods inventories on the balance sheet. A material amount of under or over applied overhead is allocated to ending goods in process, ending finished goods, and the cost of goods sold, based on a percentage of overhead currently allocated to those accounts. Okay. So I would be uploading the assignment two on both platform, Blackboard and the WeChat group. And the next, you know, my, our class is going to be our deadline. Uh, uh, deadline. And remember, the assignment is going to be on a handwritten, or you can use this e pen. And please do remember that the file should be in Word file. And please rename your file accordingly your name, student ID, subject, and assignment number. Okay, any question regarding this? No. Uh, this lecture. If no, then I'm going to end or stop our recording here. Okay, if you still have any question, you can write it on our speaking group and you can also drop me a personal message as well. Okay. Sir, any uh, any assignments for the next class? David, here, assignment two. We just talk about Yes, we do have our assignment two. Okay, David. So I would be yeah, yes, sir. on our WeChat group and the Black group as well. Okay, until then, stay safe. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Goodbye.